that's done, their surrogate court, that's what a probate court is called, it's called a surrogate court, they get to decide where the estate goes. And if someone is not named in a claim, then they decide who is and who is not an heir. And that's where they call them heirs, people they think is an heir. And by the way, that they name the state right up front as an heir. <laughs> right. So if somebody okay. were to trace their lineage prior to the 19th century and there was a connection into something in that way, would that change it? Uh, it that's, that's not really it. Um, it, it. What they're doing is they're claiming uh, uh, form over substance. In other words, they're claiming okay. a procedure negates mm-hmm. the validity of your will even though your will uh, fully complies to their own statute in form and, and indeed may fully comply to uh, the traditions of a will and testament. They're claiming that if you don't get it on the public record, you don't have a will. All you have is a claim of a will. And therefore, under probate, they get to decide who's an heir. And if you name someone in a claim, they're not an heir. They are a, uh, a, an interested party. Yeah, that's right. all they are. Okay. And may, may I ask one more question on this? Yeah, there yeah, please. Been, there, there has been some information that I've come across that the Queen of England was not actually crowned on the correct throne, so therefore she's yes. not truly the queen. So would that change what you're saying if they're the ones who are saying that they're an heir or not based upon their own, basically their own perception? So if she isn't really the queen, then she can't really give an heir or not if she's not the one really in charge. Does that make sense? Yeah, but it's, it does, but um, it doesn't really apply. I mean, there is a, there is a ritual that appears uh, before us, but it is the Beads and Mirrors show. It's a song and dance. It's a dog and pony show, okay? Right. What, mm-hmm. what, what makes her, what makes her who she is, is the fact that uh, her family was effectively granted uh, a franchise, mm-hmm. and that the, and that uh, the head of that family is effectively granted a warrant as an agent of the Roman cult, and people find it tremendously difficult to believe that the Queen of England, the head of the Church of England is an agent for the Roman pontiff, but that is exactly what she is. Exactly. Okay? Okay, thank you. Thank you, and thanks for coming on. Thank you. Okay. Great. Well, look, um, if you do have questions, you heard then. I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to answer your questions, but I know there's a number of more questions into the chat, so let me get into those while I ask, please, if you want to speak, Come online, press star hash or hash eight, get in the queue, and I'd love to speak and hear your questions or your comments. Um, the question I have here, uh, Jay Z Seven asks, can I repeat the question to uh, to Klaus Klaus's question on paper? I, I would presume legal size paper is the appropriate paper for wills. Yes, uh, unless someone can give me an alternate answer. I presume that's so. There is no reference to paper size in the Act. There may be something in regulation. Please, if someone has something other than that, type it in, let us know. Uh, question that JZ7 asks is, how and where do we start a tracing? Excellent question. Well, you, you start a tracing if you have a court matter, if you have a bankruptcy, then you have a tracing can be started by simply directing them to uh, perform a tracing. If they are uh, assuming business of the estate, and remember your all caps name is the name of the estate. It is the name of a person, but it's also the name of an estate. If they are claiming an interest in the estate, then uh, as an official, then they have a duty if they are directed by the general executor and guardian to perform a tracing. Another is to uh, to write an order, and we haven't 
uh, looked at how that could be done effectively yet. We've just been focusing on establishing the public record and fact that one is appointed to the Office of General Executive and Guardian and one has a will. So the short answer is if you're in court, then uh, you can certainly direct once business has been cleared up that uh, you want a tracing. But uh, I'll have to come back to you, Jazzy7, and to everyone on the call and show how best to perform the order to them of the uh, tracing and accounting. We did, in fact, have this built into the ecclesiastical deed, but as you know, the ecclesiastical deed, unfortunately, hit them too high. Uh, even though a executor, the judge being the executor dative of, of uh, a probate hearing, is an ecclesiastical position, appointed by a plenipotentiary, a plenipotentiary having powers granted by a bishop, by the whole church structure. Even though we know that that is absolute fact, unfortunately, they either deny it, they're ignorant to it, or they will absolutely die in a ditch, admitting, uh, die in a ditch admitting to it. So let us come back, JV7, and give you those answers. Uh, let me uh, keep going on these questions. Uh, question, are you familiar with the um, uh, spelling here of the EXE quata X Exequatur, or the regime placet, as used in the VCCR. Um, no, I have not fully. Ex I have not fully done the research on a number of the terms that are carry carries over. So I look forward to that research coming in. But I am confident, at least as to what we've presented, that the foundation of what we've presented is true. What I expect to find is that there are a number of terms that we have not investigated that need to be incorporated, defined, and clarified. So no, I don't have an answer for those terms yet, but thank you for raising them. We have a, a caller coming on here, Montana, so let's uh, unmute Montana. Hello, Montana, can you hear us? Hi, Frank, it's Dawn. Hi, Dawn, how are you? Good. Well, I have some good news. We got two more auctions stopped yesterday as far as canceled, so the families are in their homes for at least another six months. Well done. So, <laughs> until we can learn more, you know, at least they're still in their homes, and then we can remedy things as we learn more here. I do want to make mention, I put in a motion with regards to a situation. I had a credit card debt put in a dispute twice. It was ignored. Um they immediately never sent another statement but went straight to not hearing from them for seven months, even though I disputed it twice, um, met the obligations under the credit card agreement, and then got a summons at the door. And so then it led to all of this mess. But um, in the meantime, I was trying to put some motions in um, against this attorney. And um, I put in a motion and got a summary judgment against me just the other day but i did put on the motion before this honorable court the judge's name on the public record that i don the living woman and a general executor for the estate of mine with clean hands respectfully submit a motion for a more definite statement um that i went on to say i have a fiduciary duty to protect the assets of the estate that includes any accounts of money created in the name of the estate i asked for an auditing and a full tracing from the time of inception through today. And I will just tell you, and there was more, and then I put the order. He totally ignored it and went with what I would call a robo affidaviter. Means it looks like he hired some sworn affidavit to be written, and that was what I think was um, the basis that that judge probably considered that to be enough of an audit. Have you heard of that? Maybe I should have been more um, specific. Yeah, I have heard. Look, there are. Um, did that judge have a nameplate? Like, did he have a nameplate in the court? Um, I haven't even been before the court. I oh, have good, been okay. submitting the paperwork. Oh, this, oh, this is just administrative. Okay. Mm -hmm. I was just going to say, Dawn, just for everyone on the call, whenever you see a, a judge with a nameplate, uh, he's, uh, he's basically an independent contractor conducting his own business. It was his law clerk, by the way, that committed the conflict of interest by signing on behalf of this debt-collecting attorney 
on a scheduling okay, well, order. I, well, I think I think what you want to do is is uh, you want to to now um, uh, if, if there's a conflict of interest, you basically want um, the it overheard uh, overturned mm-hmm. and for a new hearing for a new hearing. Basically, you want to, uh, uh, the judgment set aside. Mm-hmm. And you want to have a a, a new uh, hearing before a separate judge based on conflict of interest and uh, and uh, failed um, failed to to follow due process. There'll be there'll be specific terms, and maybe someone can punch it into the chat to give us specific terms. And and there may be several steps. And again, I just want to say that I'm referring to you that there is a procedure in their corporate system Uh that allows you to have a a judgment or an order set aside. It's not permanent. It's not not finished, yeah? Right. It's a motion to set aside judgment, and then I will appeal it to actually the Montana Supreme Court because we don't have any other intermediate courts between a district court and then the Supreme Court. Right. So So I'm going to put my appeal appealed together but it's just very interesting that i i um had ron help me and you know took seriously read those presumptions many times and i thought okay honorable courts i'm i'm addressing them as to their honesty (laughs) that's a joke but um on the public record that i'm the living woman that i'm the general executor and i have a fiduciary duty to protect the assets um and you know what it's just interesting that how quickly he signed that summary judgment against me once they got this. And yet it took 45 days for him to look at my motion. Yet the other side has had <laughs> their stuff <laughs> represented and answered in 10. <laughs> and this well, what, he's the- relying on, what, what he's relying on, and, and I'm sure you're aware of this, he's relying on just the sheer bullying and automation of the system mm-hmm. to, to, get it, to get it through. Yeah? Right, right. So he's his he, his his sense of this is the best form of defense is attack. Yeah. Right, and I do want to warn people about just for those that are on the call, it it does appear um, that they are accepting any sworn affidavit, even though I've researched Montana law, just so that I can understand it myself. It was not even properly sworn in as an affidavit. I'm like, what a joke. I mean, well, you're right, absolutely you. right, Frank. There yeah. is no competency at this level. I don't right. even know if he really read my motion and gave it much thought. Well, no, he probably didn't. But, but again, when you're dealing with the lower district courts and you're dealing mm-hmm. with the magistrates, you know, people have, have, have kind of been shipwrecked a number of times because they've gone in all guns blazing. And in many respects, they, they end up getting a psychoval on them or a contempt. And so... What you're showing is administratively, once you get things in order, and in your mm-hmm. case, Dawn, you know, getting your will and testament on the public record, all these things sorted out, your schedule of fees, all yes. of this is vital. Yeah, vital, yes. vital, vital. And I'm because hoping to bring on board at least 50 in my community. I mean, I'm, I'm taking this material and we're meeting every week. So kind of like what good. Ron and, and those over on Washington are doing also. Um We've we've got to get it going. We've got to have a group of people, and I think, Frank, truly, what better group than to start with homeowners that are in distress, and they know that there's no silver bullet. There is no remedy for them, and and that they're looking at the pure theft of all their equity and their energy, because out here in Montana, most of these people built those homes themselves and didn't get paid for building them. Um, You know. Well, the other good the other good thing about this, uh, Dawn, is mm-hmm. is I believe that once you establish correctly the uh, standing uh, that you have as general executor of your own estate, mm-hmm. as as a head of state of a sovereign power, mm-hmm. once you have allied yourself correctly to the underlying estates and not to the corporation, right? And that means the corporation can can no longer wage war against you. Right. You can start to, to call on those de jure assets, such as the sheriffs and others that are elected into positions, mm-hmm. which is the key difference here. If they're elected, they still hold uh, a double handle here. They're both a corporate officer and a uh, public servant. 
that you can start to get some of this 